Okay, we're going to learn how to deal with some text tonight, um, resizing and respacing, using stencil fonts, welding letters to, to edges of a card, creating window opens, openings which are called apertures in some uh, places, and then welding text into those openings. I'll show you those. Um, and then doing some vertical text, and then using the bracket as a decorative element. So um, somebody in my group asked me, could we do a card like this and make the cut? So I thought it would be a really good demo. And I happen to have a, a new grandbaby, grandson due any time. Well, actually overdue now by 10 days. So we're waiting for this grandson to make his arrival so I can send that card. And so I thought I'd show you how to do this because it covers a lot of um, basics that we haven't covered in a while using, using texts. So what I'd like to start with, um, I made a template, which is, is this template here. And I'll, I'll post this afterwards. So you can add your own text for your own project. But what you need first is you need a list of eight different words. And we're going to use them in um, capital letters. We need three words in a stencil font, three words in a, a fat serif font, and two were, those are horizontal, and then we need two that will be vertical. So we will be placing the words in different positions. And this will help us to, to line them up so that they look like all one card. So since I had a baby coming along, I thought, well, baby will be fine. And so I have eight baby words that we're going to try to fit in each of these boxes or openings. So again, the yellow boxes on the edges of the cards are going to be welded to the top of the cards. These white ones are openings in the card. We're going to weld text into the inside. And then we're going to turn a couple of the words vertically. And we're going to use a stencil font to cut out lettering from, from the card here. Um, I think I have a couple stencil ones. This one would be a stencil too. Looks like it's hiding. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to how I arrange these words. You could actually arrange them however you'd like. You can start with the size card you want. My card is an A2 size, so it's four and a half, uh, four and a quarter inches wide and five and a half inches tall. So to get started, I'm going to um, add a square from Basic Shapes. I type in SQ at the top here, and that brings me all, it searches through all of the basic shapes. And I'm going to double click on the square to add it here. And then I'm going to um, resize this square to my uh, five and a half inches that I need. I'll close that because I don't need it anymore. So to resize a square, I'm going to keep the green lock icon on so that I can make it a different width than height. So my card is going to be 4.25 inches wide, and I'm going to hit tab to 5.5 inches and enter. So this will be the right side of my card. And I'm going to send it to its own layer and change its color to a, a lighter color here. Now I, I need another square for the middle section, and rather than just adding one, I've got the width already. I'll just resize the height, but I'm going to hold, with this selected, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and drag off a piece. And this one is, did I get the, I got the width wrong. Let me see, I have no snapping. So 4.25 inches wide, 
5.5 inches tall. So this one, again, will make this one 4.25 wide. And this one we're going to make 4 inches high. So I'm going to type 4 in here and press Enter. So we have the set middle section of the card here. This is a trifold card that will zigzag. We'll have a mountain fold and a valley fold, and these will fold over one another. So I'm going to drag off one more copy, Control plus Shift, and drag, so that I have a third piece here. And I'll just kind of line these up. Um, the third piece, I want two and a quarter inches high. And again, you can take this wide as two and a quarter inches, and um, two and a quarter inches high, 2.25, enter. So now we have the three pieces of our card. Um, eventually, we're going to reverse the middle section so that when it's accordion folded, the words will be correct. But for creating it, we're going to leave them all kind of uh, in the order that they will be. And to kind of uh, get the sense of, of where we're headed with it, I'll leave the, the template down here that I used to make the card. To use the template, we want to have a a, um, we want to fit the text inside these boxes. So the first text that I want to use, I'm going to click on the text and fonts here. I'm going to use a storybook because this is for a baby card and it's kind of a cute font. And I'll click on Add Text Group. And what I want to do is type in, in capital letters, the three words that I'd like to use. So, looks like I have um, a diapers. Press enter. Um, milk. Press enter. Um, bottles. Blanket. That's more than three. Um, then I have stroller. Let's see, if I'll figure out which other ones I forgot here. And I'll accept that for now. And let's see where they went. Oh, they're there. They'll go wherever your cursor is. And they'll also come in at the size of your carrot. So we definitely will need to resize these to get them to fit. So um, these letters, um, I forgot to show you in this. I'm going to undo this again to show you in the text box. And I'll double click so that when they come in, when you click on the T, I have split by glyphs here. Now you don't have to use split by glyphs. That, what that means is when the text comes in, it's going to come in in separate letters that you can move around. If you um, put this arrow down, you can um, select no splitting. And I think I will probably, um, I'll do one with uh, no splitting, so you can see how that works. I think this, the spacing of these letters is fine for what we're doing. And this will keep them uh, all together. Or I'm going to split by lines. You see now we've got this, this line separate. So each word is uh, joined together. And that's what I'd like to use here, because now I can move the word as a unit without worrying about losing things and joining things. So splitting by lines is very helpful in this particular project. So um, I'll kind of 
I'm going to try fitting these words in the boxes that I have over here on the right because ultimately that's where they need to be. To resize these to fit in the boxes, we can just do it manually or we could measure the boxes. Um, I just pretty much resized it down until I had the size that I needed. So, for example, here, um, what I, oh, I did a big problem. Did anybody notice what I did? I did not use caps. So I'm just going to undo it again and we'll, we'll redo it because I really need to use caps for this project. It, it works a whole lot better. So, um, again, I'm going to use split by lines and um, put my cap lock down. Diapers, milk, stroller, bottles, I'll put bottle, blanket, and Cradle, and we'll just click Accept there. I have to find where it went. So I forgot to move my cursor. There they are. Okay. These are all split by line. And I'm going to just put these in different places on the card. Like I'll, maybe I'll put Cradle in that white box there. So I'm going to zoom into that one. And to resize it, I'm just going to drag it by the corner, keeping the perspective. And my goal is to have it a little taller than that white box so that the top and the bottom overlap window there. I can type 4 and 3 and zoom in really close so I can see how it's overlapping. Now the, the text is a little bit too wide for that box so I'm just going to distort it a little bit, skew it, because I don't really need to change the spacing of the letters. I need to have a good spacing so that we can see um, <clears throat> and just a uh, make sure it fits in the window and overlaps. I know I was going to use some in one font and some in the other. That's what it was. That's why I had too many. Sorry, my brain is a little foggy today. Um, I wanted to use these as the words on the top edge of the card because they're kind of um, Fancy. So I was going to use a different font, but uh, and that'll kind of give a interesting look to it if we use several different fonts. So um, the fancy fonts I'm going to weld to the top edge. So I just want maybe milk and bottles in this font. So I'm going to delete that one and that one and that one that one. Okay, so the milk I wanted to be welded to the top of this card here and you can kind of decide what you want to do with your letters but I'm going to fix, fit it into that box. I'm going to type 4 and 3 to zoom in on it. The goal of this right here is so that it will fit in this box. I want it to slightly overlap the blue edge of the front of the card and it can go all the way over to the right but I don't want it any higher than this yellow box because it would obscure the word that's going to be behind it and I just want to barely overlap it because I'm going to weld this word to the card so that looks good as I come out again I can kind of make a copy of that. I go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and 
I'm going to just move it over here to that section of the card. This is kind of my demo. Helps me to look at the finished project a little bit. Now, um, the bottle, I wanted to weld to the edge of the um, middle card. And that edge is over here as, as demonstrated by this yellow box. So again, I'm going to zoom in four and three so we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the arrow key to resize it. The corner arrow, not the key, but the corner arrow selection arrow and fit it right in that box. So it can be a little taller. And again, you can use any font that suits your purpose for your particular occasion for your card. And I think I'll pull it down just a little so it's going to weld nicely to the edge of the second card. So that's overlapped. And now I'm going to use a different font. I think I'll use one that's um, more straightforward for inside the apertures or windows. So again, I'm going to go to text and fonts, type a T here, and... Actually, um, comment, Julie. <clears throat> if you uh, turn off your bold... What's that? If you turn off your bold button, you won't get those loops in your letters. All right. Now we know what my problem was. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Very important. Um, what Brian is mentioning, let me turn that on. I want to show you something because somebody else wrote to me today saying they had this problem. These, these letters are bold and they're becoming loopy here. I'll, I'll go to outline and we'll look in here and at the centers. I'll zoom in four and three, maybe seven and three so you can see what we're talking about because you might end up with this problem. I don't know how bold got on there, but you see these little loops that will cre be created on the letters. We don't want those loops. They won't cut well. They'll make a mess out of your project. So you want to make sure that they don't have those loops. I'll turn the outline off and go to fill again. And to get rid of those, as Brian said, make sure bold is not on. Oh, I really appreciate that input. Thank you, Brian. Um, see the loop here on the E? So if, you, if we do this word without the loop, which I probably should, um, I, <clears throat> before I cut it. Yeah, so I mean, um, so if the font <clears throat> doesn't have a bold, if the font doesn't define its own bold font, Windows makes it bold for you and the algorithm that it uses sometimes gives you this type of result. Um, so there's you know there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do a non-bold and then if you want them a little bit thicker you can do a shadow. Or let's say you like that you could actually do a shadow on that E with a just barely uh, well you could do it like a point oh oh one with a um, <coughs> fill you know a blackout and then shadow it again with a negative 001 and it would get to the same size but fill in all those loops. So there's a couple ways you can fix it, but the best best way is to not have bold on to begin with. And I don't really need bold for this, so um, I would just go ahead and take that bold off and type the word. So I'm going to just show you the word um, bottle again and we'll compare it to the original because this is a really important lesson because I just had this serious problem with this today and somebody else did too. So click on this, have bottle on there, I'm going to click on accept. I'm going to back out again so we can get it lined up with the original. And uh, this bottle, this one I just added, and I'm going to resize it. Just click it until you get the straight arrows. I'm going to resize it to about the same so that we can look at this really close. I'll zoom in to maybe 7 and 3. 
and then compare these uh, loops. Let's go to the B here. You see this hole in there that's not good. And then come up here and you see how clean this one is. The problem was because of the um, bold setting on my font selection. Much cleaner. This will cut fine. Anytime you have a font that ends up like this, it's just going to make a mess of your cut. Okay, so that fixes that particular problem. So I'm going to delete this one, the one I just made, and we'll move this one in its place. I'll go back to one to resize that. So I want it to slightly overlap the blue line, and it can fit all the way across. And I don't want anything taller than this yellow box, because if it is, then it would hide the word that's going to be behind it. Okay, so um, bottle is where it would be. I'm going to just hold Control and Shift and drag um, this piece over here where it's going to be, where it's going to be on this side of the card, so we know where we are. Um, and we have the milk and we have the bottle now. Um, let's do a stencil font now. A stencil font, I'm just going to use a simple uh, stencil D because I'm going to join it, let's see, stencil STD, I think. That works. And then I'm going to type in here. So you select the font first. And, oh no. There's a card we're going to make. This is a good time to look at the card. I just crashed it. So I'm going to go to make the cut again. Yes. Let's see where it is. Okay. And open. I don't know why, um, Brian, why it would shut down at that point, except we've learned that when we're running these webinars, it takes a lot of resources. Oh, I'm looking for my accordion card. There it is. Okay. I'm going to open this one. So you can see it fixed, I mean finished, the way it looks, like this. And um, that's the photo. But now that you see that, I'm going to close it because I really don't need to have any um, memory hog open. And then I'm going to open This one, which is the template itself, which would be easier to work with here. So I've got all the pieces made, and we'll go to um, text and fonts. And I'm going to use this stencil STD font to type in a couple of the words and show you um, how those will work. But I'm going to use the words uh, stroller and diapers and cradle for, for the, in the stencil font. So stroller, blanket, and cradle. And of course, I've got my caps on, but I Made those lowercase and accept. So now I have I have these um, three words that uh, the nice thing is this software remembers what you did the last time, so it still split them by line. So I can still grab a, a line. Now I'm going to put the stencil fonts. I'm going to put stroller um, in this white window. No. Not in the white window. 
I'm going to put stroller. I'm looking at my card here. Sometimes I just have to get that fixed. Oh, I'm going to delete that because I really don't want that. <laughs> I have two short words I want to use for this. I want to use crib and baby and accept. And these short words, mm, these short words, I'm sorry for my fumbling here. These short words are going to be my vertical words. And because they're going to be vertical, I want to use rotation, and I'm going to rotate left. If rotate left doesn't work, then we'll just do right. But you see how they've, um, they've rotated here? Now I can click on uh, rotate 90 degrees, and now I have rotated text. Again, split by word or line. And I'm going to fit crib into this box over here. So I'm just going to slide this up, pinch it up, but that's why I needed short words to fit in these boxes. And baby, it's going to fit in this box here. You could just kind of resize um, by size, but I find it's just quicker just to make it fit in the box. I figured out all the logistics earlier, and I'm going to move the, the baby in the crib to their own layer. I really want to have all of these green pieces. These are just placeholders. I'm not going to use them in the final card, so I'm just going to send them to their own layer. So I, before I do any welding or combining, I'm going to hide those. But for now, they're nice placeholders. Okay, so I got my stencil fonts here, and I'll show you what, what I do with the stencil fonts when I get all the, the words in here. Um, so now that I've got the stencils out of the way, Oh, I have one more, one more blanket, so we'll do that. I'm going to go to this, and I'm going to change the rotation back to no rotation. I'm going to do blanket, except, because I have a place where I can put this right over here in the center of the front card. So what I, my, my logic is, what I'm doing here is I'm doing one stencil word on each page. Now you don't have to do that, but I think it gives it a nice variety once it's all cut out. All the words are not not the same. They don't look the same. So I just resize it to fit in that space because I know once it's all combined, it's gonna um, and fold it up. It's gonna read like like a, a word cloud, so to speak, with with the words all organized all over it. Okay, so now I'm done with the stencil font, and I want to go to, first, before you do another word, you need to select your font. So I just, I'm going to go to Storybook, and I'm going to do several of the words um, welded, and then I'm going to do three of them in the windows. But they're all going to be in the same font. I misspelled blanket. Can you believe that? Better fix that. I can believe it. Well, you get to see me do it again. Let's delete that one. Okay, so first I have the font showing in the window. And then I click on the, the rightmost T up there on the text and fonts. And this time, I'm going to type in the other words, which will be diapers, milk, stroller, bottles, cradle, And I get milk, milk, and accept. 
I already got milk, but I put it all in one word. Anyway, if you make a mistake like this, I might as well show you how I fix it. I can just retype it again, but you can split the letters by clicking on the split at the bottom, and that separates all of them. So I'm just going to remove the, the letters I don't want and just select these and join so that they're all connected here, making them easier to move around. Okay, so I want diapers at the bottom of the front, and this is going to be welded inside of that white window. So, as I showed you before, we're going to make the, the letters overlap the top and the bottom of the window just slightly, and to do that, it's good to zoom in, so I type 4, that zooms out to uh, 600, and then type 3 to center on my selected text. And I want the bottom of those letters just to overlap. You could do the arches to kind of give it more character. I want to make sure it's welded securely to the bottom or joined. And then the top is going to just barely go over the, the edge of the window. This is called an aperture. And when you have an aperture, um, you can weld anything inside of the aperture. And this software, Make the Cut, this is the only software I know that does all of this so instantly with no um, multiple steps. So I'm going to, again, zoom back out and get my next word. My next aperture is stroller. So we'll take the stroller here. And again, uh, I think um, it might be nice to have shorter words. They, they might not be so pinched inside of here, but it is what it is because it's what I needed. And you'll make the card you need. So I just barely overlap. I'll type 4 and 3 again to check to see that it's I've got enough of the letter in the window to make it recognizable and enough at the top to hold on. It doesn't really need to touch the sides. In fact, we probably don't want it to touch the sides. We want it to all fit inside the window. Okay, and the last one would be Cradle. So again, you could um, zoom out by typing 1, or you could just use the slider on the virtual mat tab. Um, cradle, I'll put in the top. And again, this top aperture. Type 4 and 3 to fine-tune. There we go. So I have all of my apertures filled, and now I just want to fit the rest of the text that I need in one of the boxes. So I have milk needs to go in this box, and I just want it to fit in there and overlap the edge, as I showed you earlier. We'll um, type 4 and 3. And I just want to make sure that the bottom of these letters overlap the edge of the card, and that the top doesn't move too much past the top of this box here, because I don't want it to hide the word that's going to be under it. And the last word is stroller. Is it? No. I'll go back here. Bottles. And bottles needs to fit in this one. So I'm going to first use the corner arrow to resize it to the height I need. And you notice here, this is really the, the word that we don't want to hide. So I want to make sure that it's below the, that height, and then I'm just going to squeeze it into the box. And type 4 and 3, and I'll overlap it a little on the yellow card, right there. And zoom out again, and let's check what we have. So you'll notice here on the, the right side that there's not much here that um, I decided I'm going to put a gift card down here. I usually send my 
my kids a gift card to buy diapers. So I will um, be putting a gift card here. And then this side can be used for, it's going to be folded in. This can be used for writing a message or whatever you want to um, sign it. And that, but you don't want to fill anything in up here because ultimately, I'll show you how this will work, these words are going to be fitting like a puzzle right in here. And then these words are going to be fitting right down here so you can see how those fit. Now if they don't quite line up, like this blanket is, that's too high, I can see that it is too high and I can make some changes as I really don't want it to go over crib. So I might want to make crib a little shorter, make blanket a little shorter so that it's not interfering. And this one I might want it. So you can rearrange your words to fit your card till you get the look that you want with it. So now that I have have that, I can um, I can hide my little boxes and get rid of the empty layers by clicking on the trash can at the bottom. And I'll probably uh, I'll move my I'll move all this back to where it was. This is the stuff that was in the middle. I just do this to check for placement to make sure that it's going to look right. So. Um, and bottles. Bottles goes over here. I'm going to use my arrow key and get that right there on the edge. Now it's, now what I want to do is combine the text to the cards in the different ways that we're going to do that. So this card, the front of the card, really, oh, I, I want it to not bump into this, but I also want it to be at the top of the card, pretty much. The blanket was supposed to be a stencil. Let me leave that. And and milk <coughs> also went to the left hand card. Yeah. At the top. Yeah. So, um, get oops. Before you click the T, you've got to change your font. So I'll go back to the stencil. Now I click on the T and I'm just going to type like it. Accept. Because the blanket is just going to be kind of punched out of this space here. Okay, so let's um, get back to combining the text with the card, and this is where the magic happens. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it because you can always use Control Z to undo and try it again. I'm going to do the aperture first. No. Um, I'm going to do blanket first. I select blanket, and I select the card behind it. And I don't really want to select diapers, so I'm going to send it to its own layer and hide it for a second. And so I'm going to select a card, select blanket, and I'm just going to click on join. 
when you join, then you see what it's going to look like when it cuts. It just punches those letters right out of the card, just like magic. And we can do the other stencils as well. So click on the word, click on the card, and click on join. Click on the word. Click join. on the card. Yes. Um, is that center lot supposed to be reversed? It's going to be reversed. But while I'm while I am constructing it, I'm constructing it forward so I can read my text. But yes, you're right. We will be reversing that. Oh, after you joined it. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. Um, I'm going to hide the top word so it's out of the way. And I want to make sure baby four and three is still on the card. Yep, it is. So uh, I hold, I click on baby, hold the shift key, and click on the card, and then click on join. So now we have the text punched out of the card. So join will do that. There's no welding ne necessary when you're doing a stencil. And you can remember that when you're um, working with stencils. Now, um, the rest of the words can all be welded to the card. So um, when we come over here, milk is going to be welded to the edge, and diapers is going to be welded in the aperture. So I'm just going to select it all and click on Weld. Magic. The words inside the aperture did not disappear like they do in other software. It just welded like, like we wanted to. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do bottles. I'm going to select it. I'm going to move it over just to here because I want it to line up to the right so it doesn't obscure my baby. And so with that selected and stroller selected, holding the shift and selecting the card, I'm going to weld. And there it is. So the last one to do is the word, hold shift, click on the card, and weld. And there we have all three of our card pieces ready, except for the place where I put the um, um, little card, uh, gift card. So I'll show you that in a minute. But before we do that and do any more here, I, I do, as Susan suggested, I do need to flip this because when it opens, I want it to look like this. And when it's closed, I want it to look like this. So this is going to be um, a folded over. So I need to flip it. The flip icon, or mirror it. The mirror is the second icon at the bottom of the screen from the left. So I just click it and it mirrors it. Now the last um, thing I want to do before joining the cards is select all three with my shift key. And I want to line them up at the bottom. As you see, they're not lined up very well. I'm going to type B. And that just automatically lines them up perfectly at the bottom. So I'm going to take this one here and use my left arrow key to barely overlap it with the center section. It doesn't have to overlap much, and I don't want this letter to overlap. Then I'm going to click this one, and I'm going to use my left arrow key just to barely overlap it over the center section. When I have those overlapping the way I want, then I'm going to do Control A or click on this little arrow on the bottom left to select all, and Weld. And there we have our cards. Um, I need to add the score lines. So um, to add a score line is very easy, but I'm going to uh, empty the trash can so that all empty layers are gone. I add a new layer for the score lines. So I click on the larger of the two plus icons in the lower right corner and click on the figure eight at the upper left. And um, it's usually helpful to have snapping turned on if you're drawing a line. It's also, or to move, move up and find one of these guidelines to draw on so that you make it straight. So what I'm going to do is just click on the Bezier draw. I'm going to leave snapping off because sometimes it goes where I don't want it to go when I have snapping on. Left click on the pen tool here, and I'm going to left click on the line where on the grid line where I want the line to start. And then I'm going to right click 
on the line where I want it to end. So I have a line here that I can now use and resize. And it's helpful to kind of line it up where I want it to be using my arrow key. And I do want it to kind of line up with the top of that card and the bottom, just so I, I know I have it placed well. I'm going to click away from it. Well, I didn't need to click away from it. What I need to do is click on it again to change the arrows to straight arrows. Now just drag that arrow down here. My line wasn't perfectly straight, but um, and you know by the way it looks here. Um, I'm going to hold Control and Shift and drag. Oops, I not want to do that either. I'm going to go up here to edit copy and paste in place and then I'm going to hold the control key to move it quickly over here to the next section and again I want to select it with the selection arrow not with the uh, curved arrow so you just toggle it by clicking multiple times and then I'm going to drag it up here and then fine tune it a little with my left arrow key so that it's where it should be. Now this one I'm going to move up a little. But the score lines don't have to go all the way to your edge and sometimes you don't want it to because it weakens your card. I give it a little space and now that I've got my score lines in place uh, I go up to this layer where they are. I can double click on the name and type score lines. Oh my caps are on or lines and click on the little color box if you want them to be dashed right now they're solid and you could use a scoring tool with solid lines if you want them dashed like I do because I forget and then I slice up my card so I prefer to have dashes for my files and then if I am going to use a, a scoring tool I'll change them back to solid so now I have my dash lines here ready to go. Uh, that, and I'm going to select it all and I'm going to arrow over. Well actually if you want it to be perfectly lined up so it's not off the page just go up here to the X box and type 0 and enter and that lines it up perfectly with the left side and we see that the card is 11.958 inches wide so it should fit on a 12 inch mat if you if you're using a cutter that doesn't quite have 12 inches cutting width you can always just resize it a little by moving the arrow over but my cutters handle this width fine so I'm going to leave it like that I'm going to add a new layer here because I want to add one more thing and that was the the little brackets for the gift card so to do that I'm going to pick another font and I like for that I'm going to type B for because I'm looking for Bell MT because I like the bracket in that particular font so I type um, I selected the bell MT and you can hunt for the bracket or you can just type it in since I'm not finding it quickly I'm just going to um, on my keyboard the shift and the and the brace gives me the bracket so I accept that and um, I'm going to resize this to a height of point, and with the gold lock icon on, 0.75 and enter. And then I want to toggle to the rotation arrows. And I'm going to hold the control key and count three clicks. One, two, three. And kind of move it up here a little bit. It needs to be under the the B for the crib. Now to make the others and get them in the right places, this is trial and error when I originally did it, but now I know how how far I needed to duplicate it. So I'm going to go to duplicate and I only need one row and zero, well one column. No, I need two rows. Two, one row and two columns. And the spacing 
between the two needs to be pretty precise to get that card to fit. It's 2.35 inches and apply. Well, as you can see, this, uh, this uh, little bracket is the wrong direction, so if I use mirror, it'll put it in the right direction. So I'm going to join these by selecting them and clicking on the join icon. And now I'm going to duplicate it again, edit, duplicate, but this time I'm going to do two rows and one column, and the distance that I figured out works is 1.1 inch, enter. So all of this needs to be moved up a little bit because, oops, undo, uh, I'm going to join these. No, first I'm going to flip these. Our flip is the third icon from the left bottom corner. And they're in the right place now in perspective to this, and they're also horizontally aligned the way they should be, I believe. So now I'm going to just use my arrow key to move them up so the bottom bracket is as low as I dare have it. Um, you notice that the B on crib is going to expose a little bit of the card, but not a great deal, so this works. Now, again, since I have the brackets here selected, I'm going to hold a shift and just click the card, and now I can just do a join, which is right here, middle of the bottom toolbar, and now I have my slots for my gift card ready to go. And that finishes that particular card I usually, um, I like to cut this out of double mates or double-sided paper that you have because um, when it's folded over, you need to be, have a contrast between the other sides. So that's why when I, when I did this, I used a blue double mates so that I could see the different sections of the card. So when you're all done, you can go to File and Save. As, I'll save it as accordion card JF, so I know which one I just did. Put my name on it so I know I made it. And um, let me see if I can open the picture of the card again so you can see it. Open. I think it was this one that has the picture, yeah. So you can see the photo there and a demo of how the pieces all line up. So I'll close that.